Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps interviews. Now today's interview is very special. In this video, we have concentrated only on Terraform. So as you already know that IAC infrastructure as a code, the most famous is Terraform now uh, because it's platform agnostic. Uh, there are other few things like CloudFormation, Pulumi and few things are taking up. But CloudFormation is one of those things that are asked that is asked in a lot of interviews with respect to your cloud infrastructure when you want to create it. All right. So uh, take a look at this video, go through each and every question, take out your pen and paper, write down every question and you can expect these types of interviews, these types of questions in the interviews that you're going to take. Also, uh, make sure you go till the end. And this candidate is one of the best candidates that I have ever uh, seen uh, this interview and in this interview, every question was almost correct or 100% correct and this candidate was selected. All right. So uh, if you're new over here, I would like to request that please do subscribe the channel, like this video and share it to your friends who can, who are into DevOps field, cloud field, and this would be helpful for them. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, when you created the environment using Terraform, so what are all the components which you have created using Terraform? Some of the components which I have created using Terraform are resource group, storage account, network security group, application gateways, and VMs using Azure providers. We can use different providers also like for uh, GCP or AWS, but as I have worked on Azure, I have used Azure providers. All right, all right. So how to do changes in the configuration of already created resources using Terraform? Okay, so in order to do changes in the configuration of already created resources using Terraform, we can use one command called Terraform import. Okay, okay. And when the Terraform runs, state file gets created, right? So yeah. what do you do with that state file where you can store it or find it? So Terraform maintains a state file that maps the current status of your infrastructure with the configuration file. So the state file is commonly stored either on a local machine or a remote storage location, like storage account in Azure or S3 bucket in AWS. We can also store that in Terraform cloud. By default, it is stored in local machine and it is named as terraform.tf state file. That state file can include sensitive information also. So it is always recommended that it is always stored on the media that is encrypted at the rest. All right. All right. So uh, let's take a scenario question. Uh, let's say you somehow lose that state file in Terraform. So how to resolve that issue? Okay. So as we all already know that Terraform is a, an infrastructure as a code where we describe the desired piece of infrastructure we need in some config files then Terraform will create the infrastructure in our local code provider of choice. Like if you're using Azure, we'll use Azure provider. We can also delete or modify that because Terraform compares the cloud infrastructure state with the expected one. And the expected state is kept in a state file, right? So if we want to change, if we lost it, so Terraform, Terraform will think that we have never created those sources in the very first place, and it will try to duplicate everything. So we have problem here not only your infrastructure cost will double, but it'll also get you into some nasty overlapping and cross-pollination between previous and the fresh resources and versions. And we definitely don't want that. So in order to resolve that, we should use a command called Terraform import. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So uh, you have been working into Terraform since quite some time as per your resume. Uh, what are the major features that you found in Terraform, which you can talk about? Okay, so some of the main features of Terraform are Terraform can manage infrastructure on multiple cloud platforms like Azure, GCP, AWS, as I already stated. And Terraform uses a language called SCL, as you call language. It is a human readable configuration language. It helps you to write infrastructure code quickly. Terraform states also allow you to track resource changes throughout your deployments. You can also commit your configurations to version control to safely collaborate on infrastructure. So these are the features. Uh, you were talking about something about HCL. What is the full form of that? HashiCorp Configuration Language. Okay, great, great. So uh, there is a command known as a Terraform Validate. So can you throw light on that? If you have an example, that would be great. Oh, uh, sure. 
So Terraform validate command is used to validate the syntax of the Terraform file. Terraform perform a syntax check on all the Terraform files in the directory and will display an error if any of the file does not validate. So uh, it, we should not confuse that Terraform validate will do uh, check on formatting. No, it will not check about the tabs, spaces, new lines or comments. So these uh, some of the example which I'm going to give. So ter Terraform validate will check on that, like invalid HCL index, syntax, uh, for example, missing trailing codes or equal sign, invalid HCL references, some provider declare multiple times, some module declared multiple times, sometimes same module declared multiple times and involved module name. So if these errors are available, then Terraform will validate it and it will show the error. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, have you ever heard about that uh, there is a life cycle of in, in Terraform? So can you uh, talk more about that? Have you heard about this? Uh, yes. Uh, so life cycle is a nested block that can appear within a resource block. Uh, life cycle block and its content are meta arguments available for all resource block regardless of types. And the arguments available within a life cycle block are create before destroy, prevent destroy, ignore changes and replace triggered by. These are the arguments which we'll use inside the code of life cycle of Terraform. Okay. So apart from Terraform, have you worked upon anything like uh, CloudFormation, Ansible or something, A anything? Uh, yes, I have worked on Pulumi. Pulumi, okay. A -a any idea on Ansible? Uh, yes. Okay. So if I ask you to uh, choose something, uh, choose between Ansible and Terraform, which one would you prefer? Uh, a business should choose between Terraform or Ansible based on their exact need or existing infrastructure. With Terraform mm -hmm. being built on a declarative approach, it works best for maintaining a steady state within your infrastructure without mu much intervention. This also holds true for building an infrastructure from scratch and getting up to a specific state. But Ansible has a procedural approach. It is for those who need to manage and configure their infrastructure in the way that it see it evolving or changing over time. Things such as adding software or update in an already configured environment is where Ansible uh, excel over Terraform. So I think that these two tools are each suited best for different tasks. Both are fully featured and secure. So it really comes down to whether you need a tool that focus on provisioning or orchestration or specific configuration management. Okay, so in your current organization, uh, which one are you using? Ansible Terraform or just Pulumi or something? Uh, as of now, we are using Pulumi, but in future, we are thinking to move to Terraform. Okay, good, good. So, uh, can you talk about any feature of Pulumi or something, I mean, which you felt good about it? Uh, like, as already informed, in Terraform, we use HCL, but in Pulumi, there is no restriction that a particular language you have to use. In Pulumi, if you know Python, you can use Python. If you know uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, you can use that. So for developer, it's good to use the language of their choice. So right now they are preferring follow me okay. uh, from developer point of view. Okay, great. Okay, so have you ever heard about Bicep or ARM templates? Uh, yes, I have heard about Biceps, but I have worked on ARM templates. Uh, I did some POC on that. Okay, okay. Okay, let's circle back to uh, Terraform if you are confident on that. Uh, so let's consider a real time scenario in which uh, we have, let's say 20 resources. Okay. And everything is running fine on uh, any kind of public cloud, let's say AWS or Azure as per your choice, but we just have to destroy one resource. Can you do that in Terraform or is it not possible? Uh, no, it's possible. We can do that. Okay. And how do we do that? Uh, there is one specific command for that. Uh, so the command is like terraform destroy dash target and then we have to give resource type dot resource name. Okay, so if you'll execute this, uh, that particular will... Uh, uh, yeah, the tar in target we have to give the resource type and resource name. So out of 20, if one we want to delete, we have to give the particular resource name and its type, then it will get deleted or destroyed. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, um, let's say... Have you ever preserved the key that you have used for create? Um, I mean, okay. How do you preserve the key that you have used uh, created using Terraform? Uh, so there are different methods, uh, but the one method which I know, it is it is in related to AWS. 
So the first step is we have to install AWS CLI and then we have to store the particular key which we want to store into the folder like home inside that we have a folder for credentials. Then we have to stay, uh, store that and then we have to instruct Terraform to create a particular profile like if a particular person is going to use then we have to add the name of a particular person and instruct the Terraform to use that particular profile when it runs. Okay, 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 great. Um, so let's say you're using Azure, right? You told that in your resume that you have worked on Azure storage and uh, we have kept our state file in that Azure storage, okay? There are other ways of keeping it, but you have worked on Azure. So I'll take an example of Azure storage. So uh, we accidentally deleted that state file. So what will happen if we run Terraform plan or Terraform apply or any command for that matter? So again, as I already informed you, like it is a Terraform state file, which Terraform use when we run the command Terraform plan and apply. So if we delete that, it will duplicate all the resources because it thought it's already got created, but uh, we have deleted the Terraform state file and it will not find the state file to compare what resources to be created. So it will again create all the resources. So again, we'll face the issue that uh, cost will increase and duplication will be done. Okay, okay. Have you ever uh, worked on modules in Terraform? Yes. Okay, uh, so what are different kinds of modules in Terraform? Uh, there are different kinds of modules, but uh, as of now, I remember three of them. Okay. Uh, so one is a root module, child module, and publish module. So like for root module, every Terraform has at least one module, which is known as root module, which consists of all the resources defined in the .tf file, which is the main working directory. And for child module, uh, the Terraform module, which call on all other module, including which include their resources into the configuration, uh, that is called by the root module. So the other module which is called by the root module is called child module and the published module uh, Terraform can load module from public or private registry so we make it available for all the uh, user to use it and that's why we call it published module okay so on the basis of this I'll just ask one more question uh, so the module uh, that gets called is uh, is what like a parent module or a uh, what do you call uh, or a child module? Uh, a module which is called is called child module. Okay, okay, okay. And the one uh, that is uh, from where which we make a call, what it is called? Root module. Okay, okay. Um, have you ever uh, heard about remote backend in Terraform? Uh, any idea on that? Uh, yeah, so remote uh, back backend is usually make it, it is easier for sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem, no problem. Uh, 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 so yeah. remote backend usually makes easier for team to work together because all the members have access to the latest state data, uh, which is stored in remote backend. So it basically, I guess, it work as storage where we can store our state files, uh, and the user which are in different places can share the same state file from there. Share the same infrastructure resources. Okay, so uh, there are the multiple ways to provide uh, variables uh, in Terraform, right? So there is one way when we provide at the runtime. So how do we provide the variable value at the runtime in Terraform? Uh, yeah, so usually we store our variable in a file name var.tf. But if we want to uh, provide variable at the runtime, so in variable.tf, we usually remove the default value which we have uh, put there in variable.tf file. And then when we run it at runtime, we can provide the variable value. So basically we have to remove the value from the variable.tf file. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's say uh, in a company, in, in an organization, we have multiple environments, right? So is there any way to manage that Terraform code into multiple environments? Uh, yes, we can manage Terraform code into multiple environment using Terraform workspace or reusable modules. So basically when Terraform deploy resources, it store metadata to track the resources in state file. So if we want to deploy the sources for multiple environment, like let's say for production, QA or staging, we need different deployment actions and state file as well. However, with Terraform workspace and reusable module architecture, we can achieve a separate environment processing provisioning using Terraform workspace and reusable modules. 
uh, again, what is Terraform workspace? Then it allows us to manage separate state file for each workspace. And as far as reusable module is concerned, this is an architecture where configuration files are stored in a single directory with module block can source that directory and pass to the variables. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, why, why do we call the Terraform as an infrastructure as a code? Is there any particular reason about uh, behind that? Okay, but uh, yeah, infrastructure as a code mean writing code to provision, manage, and deploy IT infrastructure. IT using uh, codes. So similar happen in Terraform also. Terraform is an open source tool. Uh, as I have already informed, we are using SCL HashiCorp language, and it is used to build, manage, update, or delete infrastructure using code only, like for virtual machines, containers, networkings, whatever resource we create using codes only. That's why we call Terraform as infrastructure as a code. Like infrastructure is created using code. All right, all right, all right. So I think we have already talked about the alternatives of Terraform. Um, you have talked about Pulumi, which is fine. Okay, last question for today. Um, can you explain some drawbacks of Terraform, um, whatever you have faced in your career? Uh, yeah, so uh, one thing is like there is no error handling in Terraform. And one, as I have already informed that in Terraform, there is one particular language like HCL, we have to use that only. There is no other language. Like in Pulumi, we can use Python, TypeScript, any language which we want. But in uh, Terraform, we are restricted to HCL. Uh, a few things are prohibited from import in Terraform. And as I already informed, Terraform does not support script generation. And Terraform has already acknowledged that some specific version in, of Terraform includes bugs. Yeah, and Terraform backends are not accessible through variable files. So either we have to give information in place or construct a backend config blo uh, block during Terraform initialization. So these are some of the issues which we face while working with Terraform. Okay, okay, okay. So in your organization, uh, currently what version are you using for Terraform? Uh, currently we are not using Terraform, we are using... Oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. All right, uh, yeah, I think I'm done over here.